So in the last video, we added all these FX IDs. And in our view, I set an FX ID for this one image view uh, so that we could you know, play around with it just to experiment. But I'm going to remove that now uh, because we don't want to um, deal with these image views individually. They are really just picture frames. And <clears throat> the picture frames, if they're all held in something called the flow pane. So the flow pane holds a collection of these nodes. So in, um, <clears throat> in JavaFX, all of these containers hold nodes. All of these items that are controls are node objects. And they're all uh, instances of nodes. So when we look at uh, the types of things that um, uh, could be here. So behind my head is this, uh, uh, let me move my head here. There we go. Um, so we have our image view is a node, which is an object. And radio buttons, if you go all the way up, they're nodes. Labels, they're nodes, right? So why isn't that? There you go. Um, <clears throat> so when the flow pane holds nodes, it doesn't actually know whether it's holding radio buttons or labels or image views, not really. It just, they're all at that same, it looks at them as all nodes. So we have to tell it that we're actually holding image views, not generic nodes. So let's look at how we do that. I'm gonna go back into my controller here and <clears throat> I'm gonna remove this image view because I'm not using it individually anymore. And we'll figure out the deck stuff a little bit later. But what I want to do right now is I want to uh, configure the, um, uh, or initialize those image views. So I'm going to call this method initialize image views. And I like to do things in a bunch of little methods that really only have one purpose. So private void initialize image view. And if I were to describe this method, okay. So um, the, the uh, way that we're gonna do this is, remember we have this flow pane object here. And the flow pane, if we expand it, holds image views. So what I'm gonna do is loop over all of these different image views. So if I say for int i equals zero, i is less than, Low pain, uh, get children, size. So let me back this up a bit. Remember we talked about lists. So our deck of cards holds a list of cards, right? So in here, you go to our deck of cards up at the top. It's an array list that holds card objects, okay? Our, our flow pane, when I hit dot here, it tells me these are all the possible methods available to a flow pane. And this works for any type of object. And you see the top one here, get children. And on the right hand side, it tells me it returns an observable list, key being the word list in here, of type node. And if I go back to this, remember these are all examples of nodes. So it's just a list. So if I say get children, that gives me a list. And this error is it saying, hey, um, I needs to be compared to a number and you're comparing it to a list. So I'm gonna ask that list for its size. So right now we have 10 cards in our list. So this will basically be I is less than 10. And each time through our loop, I will go up by one. Okay, so now that we have uh, these, I can create 
a little variable to point to each card temporarily, each image view. So the way that I do that is I'm going to say uh, images flow pane, get the children. So now I've got a list of all these nodes and I'm going to say get I. So what does this do? Images flow pane is the variable that points to this. When I say get children, you can sort of mentally think about it. It's returning It's returning me a list with all these image views in it. So the first time through my loop, i equals zero. So it says, give me that big list, now give me zero. So it's gonna give me this image view object. Now the challenge is that the flow pane doesn't know that it's actually an image view. It, it could be any type of node. So what we do is we cast the node to be of type image view. So we have this generic node and I'm telling it, it's not really just a node, it's an image view. And <clears throat> that uh, allows me now to have all the methods for an image view available to me. So I can say image view, set the image. And uh, you know, maybe it's, It'd be good if the card gives me the back of card uh, image. So I'm gonna go to my card class here and I'll say public image get back of card image. And it's gonna look pretty similar, but the string in this case, can just be images slash back of card dot png. So the back of card image is this one. So in here, I can set the image and I can, actually, yeah, it's not gonna do me much <laughs> good right now. Um, I'll just give myself some more real estate here. Um, this will be a new image. So, <clears throat> So this loop is going to go to each uh, element in our flow pane and set the image to be the back of the card image. And the other thing that you can do is you can set the user data. So this image view can have uh, an ability to give it some type of information. So I'm just going to give it its index position. So each image view, if I look at it uh, this way, this would be image, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? So if I have a collection of cards and I know the index of the card, I can now use the same index number to, put, to show it visually in my flow pin. All right, so let's uh, do a little save and let's run this. So now we should see the backs of the cards when we run this. And there it is. So it went to each position and it updated the image view object with the back of card image. And we've set the user data, although at this point we can't see that. So in, uh, in programming, we have this idea of what's called a listener. So we can have change listeners or click listeners or different types of listeners. And it's sort of like how our ears work. So our ears are always on, and if they hear a noise, they respond, right? Our brain registers that event. So what I wanna do is if I, a user clicks on a card, I wanna register that event somehow. So the way I'm gonna do that 
is for each of these image views, So I'm going to say image view dot, and we can say set on mouse clicked. And <clears throat> this part's a little bit beyond the scope of um, uh, this video series, but this is called the Lambda expression. And the important thing you need to know about the Lambda expression is when you click the button, it triggers uh, an action event automatically, or an event anyways, a mouse event, sorry. And when you do this Lambda expression, it's going to run whatever code you put in those curly braces. So in here, for now, I'm just going to print out whatever number the image view is. So <clears throat> I'm going to say image view, get the user data. So whatever number you are, just print it to the screen. Let's try this out. So this first one here should be zero. So if I click it, I get a zero. This last one, see zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I click on this one, I expected a nine, I got a nine. This one should be zero, one, two, three, four, so this should be five. So you can see it works as expected. Every time I click on one of these images, I can get the number. So the same thing is true now uh, that we could, and we'll do this in the next video, is we can, instead of showing a number, we could flip that card over and actually uh, see what's behind that number.